Hey, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat interview, and I'm here today with Rick. How's it going? <laughs> Hi, Christian. Thanks for having me on today. So folks that don't know who you are, where you are, what you do, why don't you do an introduction and uh, give us the background? Well, sure. I'm probably here mostly because I'm a PowerPoint MVP for uh, Microsoft PowerPoint MVP. I've been a Microsoft PowerPoint MVP since 2010. So it's my 10th anniversary or last year. It may have been hard to keep track. I've got a number of those little cubes on my, my uh, statue. Well, now that they've kind of rolled up the, uh, you know, to the everybody gets renewed or not renewed at the same time, it's uh, like I should be a, a nine-year uh, Office Apps and Services MVP. And it was, I, was, I came on board uh, as a SharePoint MVP. Um, but uh, so now I'm, you know, I'm at the nine and a half year mark, but, uh -huh. you know, waiting to see if I get renewed for my ninth time. Yeah, well, it's always it's always a uh, situation where you're going, well, if I don't get renewed, I have a lot more time. And if I do get renewed, I get to hang out with my friends a little longer. So. Yeah, the, it's, it, the reality, though, and I'm sure it's the same with you, is that we would do the same stuff whether or not we're an MVP. Oh, pretty much, pretty yeah. much. So, yeah. I, I mean, in 2010, I joined the MVP program, but that was not when I first became involved with the MVP program because in 1993... I joined the Microsoft PowerPoint development team at Microsoft, full-time employee, and I was on PowerPoint for 17 years, the uh, building, designing and building uh, app, the application. And for the last 10 or so years of that, I was the, the program contact with the MVPs. Okay. So when I retired from Microsoft, they had this evil little plan in mind already, and they called me back in and said, we want you to be an MVP now. And so I've been an MVP. So my, my background with uh, the MVP program was about 20 years, and wow. with PowerPoint is 27? Yeah, 27 I, years. I don't even remember PowerPoint back in those days. Like, are there videos out there of what that experience looked like of people demoing things like that'd be fascinating to go and look yeah, at. Yeah, PowerPoint, PowerPoint actually existed prior to Microsoft owning it. It was an application that had been developed by a company called Forethought. And they were, they were actively trying to sell it to both Microsoft and Apple at the same time. Mm -hmm. It was an Apple application. It was an, it was a Macintosh application first. Mm -hmm. And I think version one was definitely just Mac. And I think version Two was Mac as well, and three was the first one out on Windows. I think that's right. And three had pretty much come out just before I joined. Okay. So it, it's been around for a while. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, look, I remember like back in that era, I mean, I was a, an Excel user before, back when they had the proprietary macro language. So before yeah. they kind yeah. of standardized everything. And that kind of broke all of my knowledge that I had built up around uh, <laughs> Excel. Um, but uh, not, not that I remember any of that, even you know, that. But Oh, I mean, you never forget your spreadsheet. No, of course not. Yeah. No. But I, it's funny, I, I, I had spent a couple of years working with Paradox and other database management tools. And Did you ever work with VisiCalc? I uh, never worked with VisiCalc. I, I worked on VisiCalc. Really? So I was, I was there at the beginning of, uh, of the spreadsheets in, uh, in the Apple II world. Yeah. Largely, largely uh, credited with moving personal computers into the business, into businesses. Yeah, that was, uh, so I was, you know, back in, you know, junior high and, and high school, um, you know, spent a lot of time, like we, we bought, we had, I think our first home computer was an Apple IIe, I yeah. believe. And it, uh, of course we had, you know, the, the gaming systems and stuff. But, oh, sure, sure. Um, but uh, yeah. Not that you never played games on the Apple IIe. I mean. No, of course not. Well, it, it was that, what was it, the reverse eye or whatever that came kind of the... Oh, eye. yeah, yeah. And Mule, oh, no, Mule was the one that came out on... Uh, Donkey was the one on the original IBM PC. <laughs> like one game that came on the DOS disk. So That's well, interesting. Yeah. Well, so, uh, you know, it, it's it's funny. Uh, like, so I do these productivity tips uh, webinars every month with a friend of mine, Tom Duff. And and uh, we go through and we we talk about it might be... Uh, you know, a, you know, a SharePoint tip. We go, we have 10 tips every month 
and there's a lot around productivity, but uh, some of the more popular, and I try to go and I blog on some of the tips that I've, that I've shared out there. Some of the most popular tips have been PowerPoint related tips because people still, you know, use it pretty heavily. And there's, I, I'm glad to see some of the capabilities. I'll have to tell you. Uh, so I, it's funny I, background. I was actually an industrial design major it was my first major at university. I did two and a half years. I dropped out of the, the program. I just, I got fed up. Because there's so much of it was uh, drawing and pen work yeah. still, yeah. and uh, I was doing graphic design for the student newspaper and uh, you know, a bunch of other things, and I just I want to do I, I just I couldn't stand spending 10, 15, 20 hours on a single drawing, a technical drawing, um, and was doing stuff on computer. And I leave the program, I leave that that university, I go back and visit friends like a year later, all computerized, everything oh, yeah. had moved to to digital. Um, but I had left the state. I was gone. You know, I wasn't coming back to that. Um, but it, you know, with, with PowerPoint, uh, like I see these the people that they do these just incredibly intricate, beautiful presentations and the animation work that they do. And I'm thinking, I don't have time for that. <laughs> I just, you know, it's gotten easier. But I say one of the coolest features, it's one of my absolute favorite things that's come out in the last five, six years has been the uh, you know the AI driven the uh, ideas capability uh -huh. in in PowerPoint. It is fantastic. I can dump my images and my text, and it go and give me twenty different options. And right. my it just it's dramatically improved the quality of the stuff that I show. Yeah, the uh, the PowerPoint team keeps very close tabs uh, or keeps very close touch with the MVPs, and so we're seeing that kind of stuff all the time, giving them feedback. Um, you probably have you touched on Morph yet? Oh, of course. When, when Morph, Morph is, was first Morph, talked about, yeah. Morph for the animation is probably one of the biggest time savers and provides some amazing results. Uh, and I, I, not, not to dismiss the AI stuff, but AI, AI is playing a big part in the future of office applications, and PowerPoint probably is one of the more visible places it shows up. Well, I have to ask you, as a PowerPoint MVP, so what are the – you know, the kind of the, the four or five coolest things that you've seen come out of it in recent years. What are the big things that impressed you? Oh, uh, we've, we've really done, we've kind of touched on the one, one of the biggest ones, which is Morph. Um, I'd have to say, before I left my, Microsoft, one of my big projects was doing the first version of PowerPoint on the web. And we were, we were basically dealing with um, no support from servers or any of the... Um, the browsers or anything. So we had to deal with what HTML could do. And, and that was, yep. uh, that was about it. And what they're doing now is nothing short of amazing to me be, to be able to get uh, on any computer, a PowerPoint presentation in email and open it up and have it go to the browser and render and play animation, allow you to edit it. I mean, there are some limitations, but it's, it's just phenomenal what, it, what you can do. And there are even tricks to, uh, if, you're, if you're, I'll give you a new one I just I found out about, that if you've gotten a presentation from somebody in email and you open it up in the web browser, you can actually use the web browser to export it as PDF. Really? So yeah, that's oh, I just, I, I was blown oh. away. I, I haven't actually done this yet, but it was proposed by someone as a solution to the problem someone had had in their workflow. And it's like, yeah, that'll work. It's, it's just amazing. Well, I mean, just the fact that we've moved from having to install like an office server solution to be able to use the applications and, and make sure everybody can open the applications to it being encapsulated as part of the downloaded file. Somebody, you don't have to have Microsoft Office installed and you'll have a little more limited, yes, but you can yeah. collaborate and respond to and do some editing and you know, across all the Office applications. It's pretty amazing. And across, across platform too. I mean, PowerPoint, PowerPoint is one of the most amazing cross-platform um, features. Knowing how the file formats work uh, and how data transfers between legacy applications and current applications and cross-platform applications. It's, it's having dealt with those problems for so many years. I'm, I'm totally impressed by what the team has been doing in the last, you know, in the last 10 years. So. Well, the morph capability that you mentioned, I seem to recall that that was a, was that a Microsoft RD 
effort. There was another product, or they even called it, referred to it Morph, or is that something else? It was back when I, they I'm did. Pretty the, sure like, it was, I'm pretty sure the Morph that's in the product was entirely done by the team. Um, okay. The R&D stuff um, typically shows up in, in, in uh, developer builds and right. gets demoed, but rarely the R&D team just doesn't, doesn't engineer for the kinds of things that the development team has to do with specifically um, international uh, language dependent issues, uh, down, uh, being able to be backwards compatible, that kind of stuff. It's just, right. they're basically proving concepts. Sure. And that's, yeah. that's the 80% of the work that takes 20% of the time. Well, and that's why I, I, if you were familiar with, um, you know, I, I've talked about this on a few different recordings, but like the GitHub, pure mm -hmm. R&D effort to GitHub and, I mean, I remember seeing the demo for that and thinking, yeah, man, that's all smoke and bailing wire. That's like wires holding that together for the demo. But I could see how directionally it was, you know, help it would go into and shape the product. So we've actually seen capabilities now get moved into, you know, teams and the office, you know, suite of tools. And there's, I mean, it, it's, it, and GitHub is no more, except I've got an icon still on my phone. It doesn't do anything, doesn't open anything. <laughs> <laughs> the app is still on my phone. Which, cool. But uh, uh, yeah, there's uh, the other thing that is, speaking of the web version of stuff, I, and there's not, so I've not been paying attention to, you know, just the pure web version of, of uh, the browser version of PowerPoint of where there are parity issues and features with the desktop. But the presenter coach capabilities is another one of those tips. Um, and there's a couple of really cool things that are, the one, to be able to go in and, run through a practice, you know, a demo of your, or walk through your presentation and for it to pull in the audio and the timing of, of, of your slides and the continents on your slides, as well as the words, pull that in there, the transcription, come back and identify pregnant pauses, ums and ahs. It's like a mini, it's a mini Toastmasters built into PowerPoint there. Well, have you seen the automatic uh, subtitling and language translation? Mm -hmm. That's, that's, we, we were using that at the, uh, at the Latin, well, even at the virtual MVP summit, we were using it. So, well, there was, so Microsoft Translator is that separate site and destination with some of that capability has yeah. been around for a few years. I did an event now it was a bit, you know, uh, so I, I was doing an event in Sacramento and speaking, we had uh, some Spanish speaking people that were struggling with wanted people to talk uh, slower so they kind of understood things. I said, hey, let's try this out. And so I set up my laptop in front of me on the translator site. If you, I, I, you know, I've not looked at it in a few years to know if it's all still there since they're building this into the other capabilities like Teams, but uh, with the camera on me and they were sitting there watching my presentation in the same room, but through the lens of my camera and the translator with headphones and it was doing real time translation into Spanish. Mm -hmm. And they were satisfied with it. I don't know how accurate it was. You know? I've got my well, eighth grade Spanish skills. You know, I think if you watch subtitling with English, you can kind of get an idea as to the, 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 the amount of noise there is introduced in language. Uh, it's, it's, it's come a long way. It still has a long way to go, but it's come an amazingly long way in the last decade. Um, We'll, we'll get better and better as we go. And especially with people developing translation dictionaries and phonemes and stuff for individuals, I think is, is the real, the real test is when, when the, when the, there's a one-to-one -one speaker to translator relationship. Right. Well, I, I know that with this, as far as the accuracy, again, I don't know how many languages are supported now. I know that uh, with my daughter who's fluent in Tagalog, uh, I had her like look, look at some of the translations of this. How accurate is that? She's like, actually, that's she was surprised at how accurate it was. And there was a few little things, but yeah. you know, it had it had more to do with the you know the 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 tone, the uh, you know the speaker um, than it was with the translation. You know, but yeah. uh, you know, th yeah, there's just some amazing capabilities. Anything else that kind of strikes you? You know, I'm I'm really I'm really upset right now because I've seen some demos recently and I can't remember if they're they're approved for public uh, distribution. Always yet. be careful with that. Yeah, you know, so I've got to hold back. But there's yeah. there's if if it's not, I mean, there's some stuff 
amazing stuff coming out in the future and there's stuff uh, that has just come out that's pretty incredible too so uh yeah it, it's i'm i'm very proud of my past association and my current association with powerpoint because uh with all respect to the other applications nothing demos better than powerpoint in these days and and i i'm I'm always excited reading through release notes on any any office update. I'm a big word user. I'm a big Excel user, but the stuff that comes out for PowerPoint, you just kind of go, man, uh, the, the whole move to agile development in the office team I, is something when I left office, I, I actually got trained in agile for another couple of projects. And I kept on thinking, how would I have ever tried to get this, this, this development methodology to work in office and it was just like office was just so stuck in its old ways and to within 10 years to have them turning around such that they're releasing new features every couple of months it just blows me away they they release more features than we than we would release in three in in six months they release more features than we release in three years yeah so no, it's uh i think that we're having the same we're going to see the same kind of change, fundamental change to what we see being built based on this whole experience, this whole work from home. It's, it's, uh, it's forced companies. So just every industry um, to rethink what a lot, you know, look, we, I've worked in collaboration technology most of my career. That's kind of, you know, my space of project portfolio management, found my way into knowledge management and collaboration technology. And the vast majority of companies that I've worked for or with um, did not support work from home policies. Uh, and, and companies that are building the technology wouldn't allow their employees to work from home and use their technology to build the technology. So I think this has forced companies to, to really think, hey, we could do this. And uh, if not everyone, uh, sizable chunks. And that's why I think that the commercial real estate is going to be in the tank for a long time. Uh, because of this. Yeah, it's funny. In the Valley, of course, you have Apple has just developed their, um, they, they just re opened in the last two years, the uh, the flying the saucer. Yeah. yeah. And that's all open plan. And I suspect that there's going to be people who are going to want to be going back into the uh, the individual office the, of the older buildings and they may be looking to re-engineer some of that, some of that structure, but um, you know, it, it, there's no, there's no, um, there's no consensus on, on work for home versus, versus work uh, in the office. I mean, there are companies that I, I think Facebook has been saying that they want people to come back in, but Twitter, I basically said work for home from home for the rest of your life. I think that's right. Yeah. I think, um, I think you're right. That, uh, depending on your concept of product development and especially I think it's going to come down to this has given us a considerable hunk of time to judge productivity in this environment, which has always been the managerial reluctance that the middle managers, if they can't be watching people working, they're not sure that any work's getting done. Right. Um, so this, this has been, uh, this has been quite a, quite a, an experimental environment to test out some of that, to get some real metrics on it. So well, I think that's you know, kind of where I was going with that too, is that look, I think it's going to have a direct impact on the types of features people want to see with a product like PowerPoint, which it'll be used in, you know, I, you know, maybe even in a more of a real time, almost like a, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud here, but like, you know, within a whiteboard scenario. So it's yeah. the presenting part of it, but you're working and moving pieces around on it. We were well. just, we were just in a conversation about that, that, uh, that as well. Um, and I was pointing out that you, you can get into these presentations specifically with engineers, but you know, engineers are just a different breed um, where they actually present in edit, in the edit view. They don't go into slideshow view. Yep. And they're showing the slides. And I was trying to think from the standpoint of product development, uh, could there be a, a mode that you went into that kind of left the tools there, but diminished them a bit until you wanted to use them, but was still edit mode. So you could move stuff around on the screen. Yep. And, yep. and they're not far from, from doing that kind of, that very kind of thing. And that's, that's typically, you know, when you go into zoom, you've got the video conference, you've got, uh, 
you've got you have your different environments you can bring up your your plugins for whiteboards and other tools i did see an interesting demo from prezi where they were doing kind of uh, for folks that don't know prezi too a few years back that was supposed to be the powerpoint killer and instead what it gave is people uh, motion sickness but it's a cool application though it's funny because i met with those guys right after i left microsoft and i was telling them you know you really have to give users control over you whenever you move from here to here the camera go way up and then come back down And that's the motion sickness thing. I think you really need to give users some control over that. Maybe they just want to slide over, maybe they want a little bit of thing. And they were just like, no, no, this is the way. And I go, you realize the one thing feedback we got, unexpected feedback we got in PowerPoint was that uh, behaviors within the application that identified what they were, what people were seeing as PowerPoint were things that they wanted to diminish to the point that when you move your mouse on and you see the little control bar at the lower left hand corner, we had to put something in there to turn that off so that people would never see PowerPoint UI on the screen because people were just saying, no, no, we don't want anyone to be thinking about it's a PowerPoint presentation. Right. We just want them to see the, the, the information. So Prezi was really kind of branding themselves with this motion sickness. Yeah. Um, but they did, they did something really cool where um, they now are doing, uh, they have a Prezi video. And so basically your, your talking head is the background and then things come in on the side and you, you become part of the, the data display of your talk. It's really quite cool. That's a great idea. I mean, yeah. to give them a call and ask them to give me another account so that I can try it out. Without yeah, that's a, I've got a, a, a good friend who is the, uh, was the kind of, uh, in, in all the SharePoint events that I would speak at around the world, um, he was the token Prezi guy, you know, the yeah. representative there. He was a SharePoint MVP, you know, but he, uh, uh, just was really passionate about the technology. I mean, I, I my favorite thing is I know one of the cool things. Simple Prezi would be to have an image and then be able to you know zoom in to like the pixel and then have right. this whole eye chart of right. whatever it was and then zoom back out. I mean, that was just I don't I I don't think that is still possible within uh, PowerPoint in, in the same way. Well, actually, PowerPoint's implemented some features that will do exactly that kind of thing. Really? Uh, I mean, you, it's a combination of Morph and some, um, I've forgotten the name of the name, but you can actually, on a slide, you can, if you're work, editing a slide, mm-hmm. you can drag a slide miniature from the left out onto the, out onto the, um, the slide area. Mm-hmm. And that creates a link to that slide and then there's a there's a a feature called zoom where you will zoom in on that translation you can basically do the same thing as Mm -hmm. as the zoom and prezi and in fact because of the way slides work and the way you can you can kind of hide the fact that it's a slide by making the image um background the same as the background of the original one so you're just looking at like a train like an icon of a train, you click on it and it grows out and then all the, the wheels are spinning or it moves along, you know, right. it's, it's, a, it's, it's a combination of a couple of features that do that. But yeah, the um, Prezi is still a valid, uh, a valid uh, platform for, for uh, a number of people. I mean, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of young people like, like experimenting in it and, and uh, they, they like saying they're not using PowerPoint, I think mostly. Yeah, it you know it it does the job. It does a great job at, at it. Yeah, I'm still look. I know that there are there are people that are much more artistic that will go and they do these beautiful presentations, which you're they you feel like you're not looking at a bunch of slides. The stuff that I do, um, I, I where I don't need to have it that that beautiful, that rich and, and stuff. I, I like to have as part of a presentation the animations and and you know different things. But it's I mean I'm always thinking of. Uh, you know, what's going to be the next step for this. It's not just me giving a presentation. I have sessions, which I never hand out the slides on. I've given a, there's a, the last keynote that I did for the ARMA conference, for example, uh, you know, didn't, didn't share that out uh, or, or shared a few of the slides as a, in PDF format um, where it was much more about the visuals. That, but yeah. the majority of stuff that I do the intention is they're immediately published out to SlideShare. People want to get their hands on them. So I'm, and I'm not reading through all the text, but I'm providing all the content that's there within the notes or on the, on the, on the screen for it to be a downloadable asset. 
it's it's not that it's right or wrong it's the it, i'm it's a different intent different purpose and end result that i'm i'm intentionally building it's a very content. it's a very common workflow and it is unfortunately the thing that does lead people to read their slides and it is and it does contribute to um i have a slide i well let me talk about two other things that i do i'm the founder of the san jose branch of pachakacha which is a japanese uh, presentation style started in in Tokyo uh, and it uh, it basically there was a bunch of architects who were gonna have a presentation have a, a conference and they wanted to have no boring PowerPoint slides so they came up with two rules first rule was every slide deck has exactly 20 slides mm -hmm. second rule was every slide advances automatically after 20 seconds no more no less yep and what this did was it focuses the presenter on, on presenting the essential meaning of their presentation, the, the core, and just working it down to exactly what they need to tell the audience and keeping things moving. Um, typically, when, we, when I work with, with uh, presenters you know, for these events, I recommend that they have little to no text on the slides, mm -hmm. that the, that the the message is in what they say, and the slide is reinforcing and supporting that message. And we, it's such a successful format. Most of my events are held in bars, and we're, we open it up to anybody who wants to come. We have volunteer presenters, and we just have a blast for an evening of presentations. And I just remind people, when was the last thing you, time you thought you were gonna sit down and watch 12 presentations in the evening for fun? Yeah. Um, but we, I'm currently just this morning, I wrote the first instruction mail to a new group of, um, of digital arts students at San Jose state. We're going to do an event in July and we're going to do it virtual. So we're, we'll be doing the presentations and everything over, over, um, zoom. I expect we're going to be using zoom. Uh, and I'm looking forward to that. Because I've I've done a couple of I've done a couple of events now using Zoom. Um, there are some things we can we're limited to, yeah. uh, but one of the big things is uh, audience feedback. Hmm. Because you can't you can't typically judge how you're being received. There's no cues uh, back and forth. I try and see if we can leave the microphones open, because sometimes there are oohs and ahs and stuff, right. but. Well, um, I know that there are other webinar platforms that have a little more robust tools. They could actually see, do people click and open up their email? So it, you actually lose, you see the attention wow. of this. So you're actually getting real-time data about whether people are, now they could be sitting in the back with their eyes closed. Just, you know, you have no yeah. idea because they're in yeah. the, the browser. But, uh, you know, there's a little more data around it, which I think I find really, really interesting, uh, that yeah. attentiveness. But the um, the other thing I have to say, because I'll get all kinds of up, upset uh, friends if I don't, is that uh, a few years back, um, a number of PowerPoint MVPs and some other people outside of the organization got together and we founded the Presentation Guild. And I've been on the board of directors of that. Uh, I think we're into, well, it's, let's just say five years, but that was... Uh, that's, that's Are these the helpful. same people that were at the beginning of the Wizard of Oz? Uh, <laughs> no, that's the Lollipop Guild. Okay, sir. So this is this is an organization that uh, basically supports, trains, and recognizes presentation professionals, people who uh, more companies should hire to make sure that their their presenters are speaking well, that their documents are well created, that their messages are on target, that everything you want to happen correct in a presentation happens that way. So we've got any number of, of graphic, uh, graphic designers who work specifically in tools like PowerPoint. And we have a credentials program where you can come in and take training to be a certified presentation present, present. We've been, we're, we got three levels planned. We have the first one done and we're, we're, uh, we're, we're issuing certificates now based on tests that people can take. But we have a, a membership, a website, we have a Slack channel, we have, uh, we have events. We take place. We take part of the part in the presentation summit once a year, which again is going to be virtual again this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
yeah. So we're the a lot of the people who are involved in this are PowerPoint MVPs. And so it's a good group That's of people. Cool. Wait, okay. What's what's the Japanese the style? What is that presentation style called again? It's called Pechakucha. P e p e t c a. Pardon me. P e c h a k u c h a. Is that Pecha something? Because because the, the the whole TED Talks movement kind of initially started around that same concept of a certain length. Maybe it wasn't yeah. that or, more digestible. It's not uh, TED is not as strict, and uh, but yeah, the it's kind of the difference between a performance art and haiku. You know, the yeah. Kucha is definitely the haiku. It's it's the very precise. Um, there's another one called, uh, oh, what's it called? It's got the same name as the Microsoft uh, development event. Um, but anyway, they, they do 15 slides in 15 seconds or something like that. They just change the numbers up a bit because uh, the Pecha Kucha organization, you actually have to be uh, awarded the, found the foundation for a city, whereas Ignite, that's it. Oh. Ignite, Ignite can be used by anybody. So Yeah. Well, I, I know that, uh, so I, I attended twice events in downtown Seattle um, that were something similar, where it was five minutes long, it auto, like they had no control over right. the slides. They got up there and it was... They, they kind of stood over on this round carpet on the side with a spotlight on them with the slides that were just going. And it was, uh, when you were talking about, you know, I never thought I'd be sitting here watching people give presentations on a broad array yep. of topics of anything. Somebody was talking about, they did a whole session on a cancer cell. And then somebody else talked about, you know, something else, technology. Somebody else was just telling funny childhood stories. It was fantastic. Yeah, that's that's what my my usual events are like. That they're not themed. Uh, I, when I do stuff for this, uh, this, the one I'm doing right now is for the San Jose Museum of Art, and those tend to be more people from the same organization and same background, or their city civic leaders or planners, um, art local art people. Uh, but when I have a regular event, it could be anyone from uh, a, a father telling the story of what it was like to raise an autistic or a, a child. Or it could be um, someone just explaining how they made their uh, their Brady Bunch style uh, one person in all the cells. They're all the same guy singing. You know, it was a whole yeah. whole session on that. Uh, I, I I had uh, the people who uh, created um, what's the name of the company where you you rent other people's houses? Oh, Airbnb. Airbnb. So the president of Airbnb, like a couple of months before he started the company, came by and did a presentation about this idea he had hmm. for renting out other people's houses. It was it was great. We we the the diversity of uh, of an evening of Pecha Kucha is uh, is terrific. Well, I know that you've got uh, you know, on your website you you have your uh, you've got links to a few of these different things, and so I'll provide in the blog post and stuff around this you know link over to that, but. What, where else can people want to find out more about this stuff, about you and get in touch? What was what the best place to reach you? That's absolutely the best place. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a bizarre last name and a an un, slightly unusual, not as, not as unusual as when I was in middle school, but uh, my first name is Rick, R-I-C, without a K. My last name is Brett Schneider, 13 letters with five consonants in a row in the middle. And so my dad always went by Brett. So I go by Rick Brett, R-I-C-B-R-E-T. And I'm Rick Brett on Facebook, on Twitter, um, on Insta, no, not Instagram. Uh, Instagram, I had to go with something else, uh, long story. Yeah. Um, but uh, you can, you can pretty, it's, I'm pretty easy to find. <laughs> well, you know, I really appreciate the, you know, talking and I, I've got some stuff to go take a look at as well here, but uh yeah, now I'm, now I'm interested to find out if there's any of these groups if, uh, you know, officially here in the Salt Lake area. I'll have to go check it out if there is. I'm pretty sure there's one in Salt Lake. There's got to be. There's got to be. There's, there's over a thousand worldwide. Well, one last question on that. Is there uh, etiquette for watching those things? Like at, when they wrap up, does everybody sit there snapping? Is it like a bit hipster? <laughs> no, it's it's pretty much straight up applause and, and, okay. uh, and, and cheers. That's good we, to know. <laughs> uh, it's funny because um, as, as the MC for the events, I always have to tell people that when they're done, don't run away from the stage. 
hang around for the applause, hang around for questions. But yeah, we just did. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's not, it's not a hipster thing. It was a, you well, can do the, that. You know, that's with, the typical to see that, but that's see normal for, you know, you wrap up a presentation and there's already somebody at the door of the next group trying to get into the conference. Right. Right. Because you took, kind of, you took too long. Up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. It doesn't happen with Kachaka. That's right. Well, really appreciate your time today. Really. It's great to, uh, to get to know you and learn more about this stuff. It's been fun, Christian. Have, have, thanks for having me. Thanks a lot.